Okay, good afternoon. My name is Peter de Wilde, um, and I'm following up on Chris who did planning and Simon who talked about architectural design by coming from the engineering and the building physics science of things and talking about something uh, named in our discipline the energy performance gap. Um, I did a fellowship on this a year ago, looking into this area, and it is important because if architects and engineers want to have the right tool, then of course we need to predict how energy efficient buildings are going to be in the future, and not all is well in that area. Um, what is happening is that a lot of the energy efficiency and the energy use we predict in an engineering stage does not match what we actually measure once buildings are up and operational. Now, from an academic point, that's great. That means I've got a nice area to delve into and do research and write all kinds of academic papers. But from an industry point of view, it's not so good. It means that the buildings we build do not meet the targets we set and we promise the clients. Um, those clients then turn around on the whole building engineering sector and say, you know, guys, we're not really sure about your credibility and, and how well you predict things. If we then want to move to buildings that are robust towards changing climates, different occupants use, if we can't predict what is going to happen when the building is up and running directly after construction, then we're not going to do that 10, 20 years down the line. And it means that if we look into things like finance and we do novel concepts such as performance contracting, we don't have the right tools to serve the industry either. Um, this is some evidence from the US, which I like to see. These are on the left-hand side. Um, LEED certified buildings. LEED is a gold standard for being very energy efficient and environmentally friendly buildings. If the buildings are on the 45 degree line, then they predict just as well as perform as well as was predicted. On the site, then, they don't match that. If we go to the right-hand slide, what you see is if you zoom in on the buildings that are more energy efficient, this cloud of points starts to raise really over the 45 degree. So the more energy efficient we make our buildings, the worse our predictions are, and the more we actually need to start looking into this performance gap. So what I did during my sabbatical on this subject was look into the hypothesis that, well, if we predict actually we should not use a point prediction in that one measurement, but we should take into account that there's uncertainties in there. So in an ideal case, you would have two histograms overlapping, and then you would naively say, well, let's say whether those overlap, that gives us an indication of that performance gap. I actually then went to town to the own building that we're in at the moment, so we made an energy plus model that was used in various peer-reviewed publications, so we saw that it was pretty strong, um, worked with that, and did some analysis which we'll show you, which is actually not so encouraging as we were thinking. At the same time, I had lots of data from the building energy management system, so I'm sitting on a sea of data, right? So I can do all this nice analysis and go ahead. Two years of data for electricity and gas for the place here, so I had something to go to town with. Um, for the simulation, you need to go in a complex world, and I won't bore you to this, but it involves MATLAB and it involves uncertainty propagation. Um, I worked with a tool developed at Georgia Tech where I did my postdoc training, um, applied that to the model I had here, and came up with some results that are not so good. So without going into detail, if you look at electricity, gas, and overall consumption of the, of the building, if you supercharge, you get a distribution for your electricity use, and then you only have two measurement points, so that whole cloud of data which I pull from the building energy management system condenses into one point if I do an annual prediction, and it's actually a challenge to do something else with it. And actually, those measurement points are way off from what we predict. So even if we try to take all the uncertainties that we assume are in the building and we try to handle that, our tools are still pretty far off. Now, this is, of course, is one case, but we've had various goes at this, not just here, but other teams with other tools at other places. And this seems to be happening all across the industry. So we really need to ask ourselves what our tools are doing at the moment. So we have significant knowledge in building physics, and architects and engineers are using that. But at the same time, we need to say to ourselves and be honest, we're not as good as we would like to be, and we need to do a better job on this. Some things that we need to do is better define the gap. So if I talk about one year against the other, what do I compare with? Simon will tell you that the energy performance changes over which design stage of the design process you are. So you might compare one stage with the other. 
Um, uncertainty propagation is a very difficult area where we need to deal not only with material things, um, but deal them, push them through the, through the simulation, um, and we need to deal with the whole life cycle. So we need more work on this area and more data from comparable buildings. And if you want to read a bit more of this, these are papers we published and a conference we had on the subject last year.